Hi there, Lugaru21 here. Uh, I have in front of me the Quickset Gen, uh, Smart Key Gen 3. This is uh, specifically the uh, Uptown model. Uh, the Downtown model, I think, has a little bit of a thicker face, if I remember correctly, and it's not quite so big around. Um, this lock uh, is generally considered to be very, very difficult to pick. Um, I'm only aware of two other people who have actually successfully picked this lock, um, and I had come up with what I thought was a uh, slightly unique uh, attack vector. Um, Chris Ains and Cadis, they're the two that have picked it before. What they did is they came over the top of the lock body to push down this sidebar here, because this sidebar needs to be pushed down in order to interact uh, with the pins that are inside. Uh, they're the kind of combination pin wafers. Uh, the method that I'm going to use is to actually come in through this opening here where there's this ball bearing between the plug and the lock body and use that to push down the sidebar. Um, the reason that I actually like uh, this method a little bit better is because with uh, the other method coming in from over here, uh, there's a little bit of uncertainty in picking the lock. Uh, you have to jiggle the pins a little bit, maybe jiggle the sidebar a little bit in order to get everything to line up just perfectly so that the sidebar will drop. Uh, by coming in from here, you get to actually apply more even pressure, uh, which means that the sidebar wants to drop for you, actually. Um, I said I thought that this method was unique. Uh, that's because as I was preparing for this video, I uh, was re-watching some other videos, including a video by Tumblr where he's kind of talking about this lock, and that's actually the attack vector that he proposed in his video was um, coming behind that ball-bearing opening right there. So, uh, Tumblr, congratulations, that does work. Uh, the problem that he saw with it is once you had your shim uh, in that opening, the plug uh, doesn't want to turn uh, because it, it basically the, the shim gets in the way. Uh, here's the, the key. Uh, as you can see, it's not real wild bidding or anything. Goes in there, turns. Um, so let's see if we can't get this open. I've already been talking for two and a half minutes here, which nobody wants to listen to me talk. Everybody just wants to see the, the lock picked. So let's get it picked for all the fine people. A little too far. Um, and uh, you can kind of control the tension on the sidebar by just slowly inserting that shim just a little bit further as you get each pin picked. Is that in the right spot? All right, I think we're feeling good here. Let's check. Oh yeah, we're picked. Uh, so the way that you can tell when this uh, lock is actually picked is as you start to turn uh, the plug, uh, the shim here gets pinched in and doesn't want to easily remove. Uh, so then you just keep very light uh, turning tension on the core as you back out the shim and the plug will turn. So let's... Uh, Turn that back again and get this thing opened up so you guys can see the inside. Um, let's see here. If I remember correctly, I've only really opened this thing up once, so it's a little bit of remembering what I need to do. So there's actually two clips. Um, this first clip uh, keeps it in the housing. Um, oh, and for the housing, you can see there that all the channels still all exist. The second clip keeps the plug 
in the lock body itself. It's just another little washer in there. So we'll kind of carefully remove that. Here's the lock body. Let's see, all that is still intact. Uh, here's the actual plug. I'll pull out the key. Oop. Ah, that's just a ball bearing that fell out. No big deal. Uh, so you can see that the sidebar is up. Insert the key, sidebar drops. Um, let's kind of carefully... Eh, probably don't really need the key in there for this. Oh, I guess I do need the key in there for that. Haha, -ha, never mind. Fool me. All right. So carefully pull this back. There we go. So there you can see the, uh, the internal pins all sitting at the heights. And then here you can see all the wafers. Kind of bring that up a little bit closer. And these grooves in the wafers interact with, there's like a little nub essentially on the sides of those pins. Not sure if you can really see it on there. There we go. Oh, there you go. You can really see it from that angle. Those nubs jut out and interact um, with these wafers. Uh, and then when the wafers are all lined up, the sidebar retracts, as you can see there. So, let's see if I can get these out of here, actually. I, I don't know if I've actually seen anyone really take these out. Oh, there we go. That's what a wafer looks like. So, there's really not much to the wafers. There's just a cutout in the back, and then the teeth, and you can see all the teeth right there. So, that's my video.